лекции. Хари Шарма, он прочитает вам лекцию, которую вы сейчас видите на экране. Он работает в институте в Швеции и является профессором по нейробиологии, доцентом по нейроанатомии. Его специализация – это, как вы видите, различные восстановительные медицины и исследования в области центральной нервной системы, восстановительной медицины, системы воловых клеток и различных препаратов. For the honor, and uh, I hope uh, I can continue in English. No translation. No, no, on English. Okay. Mm, it's okay. Okay. So first, that I am very honored to be here. This is uh, our maiden visit to Vladivostok, but not uh, we have visited several times to Moscow, Russia, and we have very great regard to this country, very great country, and we love because originally I am from India. <coughs> but working in Sweden since 35 years. So I will show you our some of the research carried out in collaboration with various organizations across the world and we have some uh, serious intention to develop some collaboration with people over here and we hope that we may be successful eventually. So I'm working on the central nervous system and I, I guess some of you are uh, familiar with the uh, pharmacological student or neuropharmacology? Oh, no. Pharmacology in general. <coughs> okay. So our main interest, we have so <laughs> you know, different temperature, but pardon me. So our main interest is to uh, protect the central nervous system, uh, either caused by injury or stress uh, in different ways, and then uh, try to treat them. We are working with the uh, US military here, this uh, right, Patterson Air Force Base. <coughs> we had collaboration with the Department of Defense, United States government, uh, also Swedish government here. I am from Uppsala University, and there are other foundations from Swedish Strategic Foundation. And we have different collaboration, as you can see that uh, this is me, this is Dr. Bafil Moresanu, he is from uh, this Center for um, uh, Neurodiagnosis Diagnosis and Research. Then we have uh, Jose Vicente La Fuente, he is from the University of Basque Country in Bilbao, Spain. Uh, then uh, this is our Indian colleague from Ranjana Patnaik from Banaras Hindu University, you can find somewhere. And then Dr. Ryan Tina from the United States. Uh, and also this Asia Uskezik, she is also from the United States, Herbert Moser from Austria, and my wife Arna Sharma is here. We have uh, collaboration with the uh, European Aerospace Research Development, and uh, also uh, different uh, countries like uh, Italy. We have support from the company, Ever Europharma, but uh, I have no conflict of interest. Okay, second please. Uh, whatever I am telling to you is uh, my personal view. I have to state it has nothing to do with any government or any military organization. And I will be speaking to you for about 35 minutes about my talk. Mm -hmm. Next please. So we are working on uh, <coughs> nanomaterials. And I, I guess you may have some idea about nanomaterials. They are uh, very tiny and even you go to the forest, there are so many nanoparticles present in the environment. This is industry hazards. You have uh, many uh, nanoparticles in there. Motor vehicle exhaust. They release nanoparticles and they can affect human health. Right? So the point is that uh, uh, how we can protect human health from these nanoparticle hazards, even they are present in this room as well. So that is one point. The second point is that can we also uh, enhance the effect of drugs using nanomaterials? These are two opposite points, but we have to consider all these things. So, so the point is that, uh, no, no, not yet. So we have this nanomedicine. Now we are talking a lot about nanomedicine. It means we deliver drug using nanomaterial, that is nanomedicine. And 
the point is that uh, I am only uh, working on the brain, so I have no idea about other things. We are working on the brain. So the question is whether the size of nanoparticles matter. That's very important. The second thing is type. Type means, uh, for example, the size of three nanoparticles, silver, gold, copper. So the material of silver, gold, and copper are important, even they are same size. These are the questions we ask. And the second thing that can it be modulated by external factors? Means if we have disease, some same nanoparticles may have much more uh, adverse effects. These are some of the questions we are asking. And uh, external factors means <laughs> gold. Internal factors means hypertension uh, or other disease. And can we achieve the same result by the uh, So these are the background of my talk. And can I please change? Next, please. So what is important uh, in the central nervous system? Only one point. We have blood-brain barrier. Have you heard about this? Yes. Okay. So uh, our brain is unique because anything you inject into the uh, circulation, it doesn't go to the brain. This is important because uh, the brain is protected. But we, are, but on the other hand, if you have <coughs> brain tumor, for instance, or any brain disease, then the, uh, this barrier hinders the penetration of drugs. So that is the problem. So we are dealing with that. And uh, this is the after uh, Stanley Irwin Rappaport from National Institute of Health. He published the first book in 1976, Urban Barrier in Medicine. I was very impressed about that. Next, please. So I, I tried to do an Indian thesis uh, in, as early as 1982 and try to understand uh, why people have any needs or why people have psychiatric needs. So uh, this was on stress. And at that time, uh, we have many collaborations from Moscow, uh, Russian Academy of Science, they are working on stress. And uh, it is quite a known fact that people are very much interested in Russian Academy of Stress on many systems. We are working on that. So uh, the, the point is that we found that different types of stress for longer time or shorter time, they open the barrier. This was the main result on, on which uh, my university has awarded me the doctor thesis. <coughs> this was my and supervisor, Professor May. Next, please. So now we are talking about uh, brain protection, and people are talking about <coughs> neurons. I think you have some idea about what the brain basically consists. It's neurons, glial cells, mm -hmm. uh, and also the endocrine cells. So when we calculated, you see that neurons, glial cells are much more uh, in number than neurons, and this is <coughs> endothelial cells are even higher in number. But people are not looking on the blood and barrier. They are trying to protect the nervous system, means neurons and glial cells. Next, please. So we focused this idea that blood and barrier is very important, and we published this book in 2004. Um, and this was the preamble written by uh, another uh, great scientist from NIH. And I'll uh, show you the next, next piece. So this is uh, Milton Brightman, who first time showed that this uh, land will <laughs> stopped at the light junction here, and that is the anatomical size of the protein. So I am very fortunate that he, he wrote the uh, forward for my book. Next, please. Uh, basically, I am a neuropathologist because this is Ingo Olson, who is my mentor. He is uh, once the president of the International Society of Neuropathology. I am very happy uh, that I, I have worked with him in early 86. Next, please. Uh, this is another professor from Germany, Dr. Sarvas Navarov, and uh, we were working with uh, Hamburg Foundation fellow in Berlin at that time. Next, please. So our main idea is that any kind of CNS insert opens this barrier, uh, having edema means accumulation of uh, water inside the vein that is very dangerous, and then it can change cellular expressions, leading to something. <coughs> Next, please. So why about nanomedicine? I will show you some example uh, of our research. Uh, you also heard about Alzheimer's disease, I think most of you, because this is <coughs> not only the old ages, but also uh, you can have problems with memory, you can forget the names, you can even forget what you are reading today, and the, uh, the consequences are very uh, dangerous. Next, please. I can show you here that uh, 
this this was the first patient uh, diagnosed by uh, German scientist Alzheimer. That's why the it has the name. Next, please. You can see here that uh, this is the Alzheimer brain, and this is the normal uh, human brain pathology. You can see that how this temporal uh, cortex is shrunken here, and the brain becomes so small. Mm -hmm. Next, please. These are pathological images where uh, we can see that uh, development of senile plates. These are uh, pathological germs. Brain has many other deposition, and that is uh, that is in your neurons, glial cells, and also the uh, functional aspect. Next, please. This is another example that deposition of amyloid beta uh, peptide at the, uh, along these uh, nervous system. Here, here is the neuron, and the, these are the axons, and that is one of the leading cause of having Alzheimer's disease. Next, please. Well, these are biochemical cartoons showing that uh, not only this uh, amyloid beta peptide, but tau protein is also uh, involved. Have you heard about the name of tau? No. Next, next please. So, so this beta amyloid functions when they cut by the uh, enzymes itself, they produce many things, including uh, this tau and other things. Next, please. Uh, here, I only show you that. Uh, it's not only neurons, glial cells, but endothelial cells are also in, involved in Alzheimer's disease. So all components are involved in any kind of disease, not only Alzheimer. Thanks, please. Uh, I'm just showing that uh, we have uh, summarized some results that blood barrier is leaky in Alzheimer's disease. In fact, it was not known earlier. Thanks, please. It's human cases. You can see that uh, there is also leakage of serum proteins. Uh, after 300 cases, means the uh, barrier is broken down because uh, uh, albumin, fibrinectin, they are not very good. And uh, if the barrier is broken down, you don't need any tracer, they can go inside the brain and you can detect it inside the brain. Next, please. These are some <coughs> examples that many gravel barrier enzymes are also altered in this uh, disease. Next, please. Uh, showing some examples that endothelial cells are altered. Alzheimer's disease means the gradual barrier also at this function. Next please. Uh, concerning treatment now. The treatment that uh, any disease has many factors. No disease comes alone and no disease has only single factor. So why we should treat with one drug or uh, having uh, mobilizing only one factor? So therefore we are using this uh, neurotrophic factors because also uh, potentiate the neurons, real cells, and the real cells. So there are some which here. Next, please. Then comes nanotechnology in Alzheimer's disease. You can see that people are mentioning it in 2000. The nanotechnology is using many drugs to develop fast penetration. Next, please. We are using cerebralizing. I think it has very old relation to Russia. Some of uh, you might be knowing that uh, the original discovery was in Moscow and then it was taken by an uh, Austrian company and it is manufactured now uh, and commercially used. It has, uh, it is also working uh, clinical trials in the United States of America. So uh, I think in early 50s, 60s, cerebralizing uh, is basically produced in Russia. So it has multi-model effects, not one. And the region is, next slide please. Uh, this is the combination of uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor, glial cell derived neurotrophic factor, and endothelial cells, and also very active peptide uh, fragment. So it is a lot of mixture of good things. Okay, and we have tested in some other models. Next slide, please. Here we have used an animal model of uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, and you can see here that leakage of albumin is there means. And the breakdown of the garden barrier. When we have given cerebralizing, it is well protected. Next, please. Then we try to develop our uh, drug delivery system using uh, United States uh, latest research. He is uh, Dr. Pudong. He, he is doing, uh, he developed the nanowires. Next, please. Uh, we are using titanium dioxide nanowires. It looks like this. Next, please. And this is Dr. Ryan Tian and this is Dr. Wang. They have the US patent of this nanowire uh, and they <coughs> that will be done uh, with these nanowires and we administer in biology. Next please. 
nowadays people are also using stem cells uh, and nanowire because if you uh, nanowire the stem cells it can live longer and it, it can have a very long effect and the stem cells are not dying this is an example next please but uh, since these nanowire nanotechnics are very expensive this is the former Arkansas governor who is helping because the work is going on in a party in Arkansas. Uh, next please. And uh, I have my pleasure to tell you that uh, my wife and submitted an innovation. Every year in the United States there is National Innovation Summit uh, in the middle of May. So uh, the innovation was submitted by co-administration of nanowire circulizing with co-administration of uh, of INSH that is related to C. Uh, when we have an electricity deprivation, they have mental dysfunction. That work I will present tomorrow. Okay. So uh, sleep deprivation and when our soldiers have had injury, then it is much more bad effects. So what she did that uh, she presented this uh, with cellulizing and alpha INSH and wire and found significant mineral protection. So the uh, jury comprising US government and many defense uh, experts there, they found that this technology is top 15% new development. This was a this year. Next please. And, and that was the certificate given to the world. So we thought that we are doing uh, very right things. Next please. Uh, in 2013, this only le nanowire leveling of cellulizing uh, for neuropathic pain they found that this technology in the pain was uh, even better, so I have given only 20%. So she got 15%, even higher. Next, please. Okay, this was just the uh, news game of Next, please. So here, uh, I told you that in Alzheimer's disease, there is a leakage of uh, serum protein, and here is the serum protein. Okay. Next, please. Uh, we also measured uh, and beta peptide, and you can see that when we have given nanowire cellulizing, this is very similar to control level. Next, please. I mentioned tau protein. Tau protein is increased in Alzheimer's disease, and nanowire cellulizing here you can see that it has significant changes. This is cellulizing. So the message is next, please. The message is when the same drug is given using nano technology, it has better effect than the normal. So this was the model uh, we used uh, Alzheimer disease. This is uh, infusion of amyloid beta peptide in transcerebral for four weeks, and then we went to collect drugs. Next, please. Uh, we we are basically uh, morphologists, so we study like microscopy and also electron microscopy. Next, please. So here you can see I, I can't see you. So you here. That's why I'm showing here. We, this is uh, a beta infusion. This is nanowire cellulizing here, uh, and you can see that the leakage of albumin is much less as compared to cellulizing here, and also this albumin changes uh, much better with nanowire cellulizing. Next, please. Uh, coming to the neuronal damage, you can see that nanowire cellulizing has the best effect on neuronal survival as compared to these two Next, please. Then we went to electron microscopes, because like microscopy, uh, some people can say that uh, there are too much artifacts. So we wanted to study the ultra structure level, that will give us much more clear picture. Next please. So uh, first we look myelin. This is the myelin after uh, infusion of uh, amyloid beta peptide. You can see that this is not so clear. It's much more damaging here, much more space here. And nanowire cellulizing, you can see that this myelin is well constructed. Of course the vesiculation is here, but compared to cellulizing, this condition is much more better. Next please. The question comes, as I told you, the internal and external factors, how they can uh, affect the disease. So, we try to study like, what happened the same uh, environment that we tried to infuse in that we This is an example that we used by the disease. You can see here that uh, this albumin leakage and astrocytic activation using uh, GFFB and missing all were highly. Uh, Then the question comes, since we are working with uh, different military organizations, including China, so 
we need that uh, all our uh, military personnel, when they get heavy, heavy duty, even if it is not visible, they are more susceptible to the and this is well documented in military research. Next, please. So, we, we use a model of uh, head injury that is very similar to human cases of concussive head injury. This is, of course, right. We drop a weight of 114.6 gram on this uh, skull and it gives an impact of 0.24 newton. Next, please. As in human cases, uh, if uh, any neurosurgeon or clinical uh, person are right here, if I have this blunt head injury on the right side, the brain moves to the right side. So you have counter to it. In counter to you have the opposite side is much more damaged than the impact side. And we can see the same thing here. Uh, injury on the right side, you can see much more damage in the left side. Next please. Uh, here is the table I just want to show you that uh, uh, this is the case of Alzheimer's disease after injury and this is the number of neurons and there are beta peptide deposits and aldone leakage. But you can see that uh, uh, this nanomolecular of cerebrolysin is, is quite good here, reducing the number as compared to the normal. But uh, when we have given also median primal stem cells alone, they are also doing good. But the combination of median primal stem cells and nano is the best here. You can see the number here as compared to this. This is the uh, amyloid beta peptide infusion alone, and this is the after category. You can see all values are very uh, higher. And you can see here that the combination of median primal stem cells and nano all values are much lower. So it's the multiple uh, additive effect. This is an example showing uh, nano median primal stem cells. <coughs> neuronal injury is untreated. This is nanowire cerebrolysin, and this is a mixture of nanowire cerebrolysin and, and nanowire impact stem cells. You can decide the dose of that this problem is the best. Okay. Next please. Then, uh, in the last part, I, I will show you some example. There is an enzyme recently called nebulizer. Uh, it is changing in both Alzheimer's disease and also traumatic brain injury. So some people are advocating that if we can uh, substitute nebulizer, then probably it is zero protect. And there are certain evidences about that. I'm not going in detail. So this is the nebulizing uh, enzyme. Next, please. And it is uh, rather uh, nebulizing can be seen together with uh, amyloid beta peptide, but it is not uh, uh, associated largely with the real cells. Next slide, please. So <coughs> here we have given the same situation. We have uh, given nanovirus nebulizing and nanowire cerebralizing plus uh, nebulizing. You can see here that the brain pathology is also reduced here, edema formation is also reduced, and even the leakage of um, uh, albumin uh, or permanent uh, barrier is completely reduced even after traumatic brain injury. So uh, I can only tell that cerebralizing effect is also <coughs> exacerbated when we have given good drugs, in this case the enzyme like the million time stem cells. Next please. Hippocampus is the most uh, susceptible in any kind of memory dysfunction. And I'm showing this example that uh, traumatic brain injury and Alzheimer's disease here, and here we have vegetative uh, cerebralizing, and you can see the cells are much more healthy in this column as compared to this. So we are working together with uh, some of the novel audience because to test our hypothesis that we are doing right. This is Sir Harry Koto. He has some idea of small peptides. Also, nano deliver in some cases. Next, please. So, I can only tell you here that uh, traumatic brain injury, diabetes, all at the rate, the brain pathology caused by, uh, induced by Alzheimer's disease. And this is just an example that cerebralizing and cerebralizing, as well as cerebralizing and stem cells could be doing better. Next, please. And final five minutes, I will show you some example. I raised the question that uh, what will happen if we deliver the uh, drugs in two different methods, both are nano So, in this case, together with our colleague Giovanni Tosi in the University of Modena, we are using PLGA level cerebral acid. The same drug, two different types. Okay, next please. When we have this PLGA loaded cerebral acid, we can see that it is quite steady for the longer period. And I can show you these are the, uh, the different areas of the, of the, of the, of the, of the point is here that this is uh, nanowire 
and this is PLTS cellularizing. Although you can see that this uh, nano delivery of cellularizing appears to be more effective than PLT. Of course, both are significantly uh, prevented in hand. So there are some minor differences. We are working maybe it's more ability or uh, more of uh, action. We do not know yet. Uh, why we failed in the cases so far, even in lots of experimental works are going on in this factory, because the clinical cases are entirely very difficult to find. Uh, the majority of the brain in the cases are similar because there are many other problems. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Andrew Shelley. He is a uh, 1977 Nobel laureate in physiology and medicine who discovered corticotrophin in the factory. Next, please. Uh, this is our fragments, and now we are working also in combination with cellulosing, and we are whether we can have some better effect in Alzheimer's disease. Some research will come later. Thanks, please. Uh, this is Dr. Asia. Uh, she works in uh, Arkansas as a PhD student, and she has the idea that we can try it in a third way. So she developed some genetic nanospheres, cellulosing was injected into it, and we have seen the images. Next, please. So this is the uh, titanium nanosphere created by her, loaded by cerebralism, and you can see cerebralism there in a sticky release for a longer period. Next, please. And this is another Nobel laureate, uh, Ava Brunet. She got Nobel Prize for bacterial resistance of antibiotics. So we feel that probably if uh, in cases of uh, antibiotic resistance, we can uh, try to have an delivery of some antibiotics, maybe to get rid of these are all works to be carried out. Next please. So one of the questions are that how and why nano delivery of blood cell We have just published this paper in uh, this year, I think last week, and what we can see that this is the blood level and this is the brain level. So when we have given nanowire uh, loaded with drugs, they can penetrate the endothelial cells without damaging it. They can be lying here, around the neurons, and in the uh, areas between neurons and glial cells and they will deliver the drugs, release the drugs and so that they can be acting for longer periods. These are the hypotheses that we have found in our hands quite correct. Next please. And uh, in, in September, first week we were uh, in the USRDA Nanotechnology Laboratory Summit where they are trying to identify uh, the level that would be safe for human exposure and also the drugs that we are using so many kind of laboratories will be safe. This is Dr. William Sacker, he is the director of the USFD at Jefferson, National Center of Toxicological Research. And they are making new regulations for nanoparticle safety for humans. It will come probably on the next few weeks like this. Next please. So the point is that, that uh, what we need, we need not only regular drugs but also this uh, nanotechnology and it's covering the Internal uh, factors, internal factors by uh, treating disease. Next, please. And I can just show you that uh, in San Diego we are presenting lots of uh, nano delivery of data. Uh, these are the policy papers I was talking about that need to educate research clinicians and policy makers about nano delivery of drugs in neuroscience for effective management of clinical strategy. Next, please. And this is the other way that PLG level and the is cerebrovascular and diabetes disease, what are the other parameters are changing. Next please. Then only if you have can affect alpha cimidine in Parkinson's disease, that uh, in the uh, nano symposium. Next please. Also, nanovirus cerebrovascular potentiate uh, histamine receptor drugs and diabetes disease. These are new data, they will be presented there, and it is very difficult to uh, get papers of symposium and separate. Next please. We are also working on uh, some blast injury induced changes, but these are, uh, I cannot disclose this further now before I present it there. Uh, and we are getting a similar kind of things. We are studying uh, also nanotechnology and cerebralizing. Next, please. So, what we can see that we must concentrate on uh, the development of nanomedicine for uh, normal uh, disease, but we should also understand the neurotoxical aspect of. These are uh, it's uh, use collaboration of plants and support. Next, please. These are uh, 